Hey guys, just want to do a really quick video here on this uh, EcoFlow Delta II battery uh, power station. Uh, these things have become really reasonably priced. They're going to be great for boondocking or power outages. Um, this guy right here has a thousand watt capacity um, battery in it. It's LFP based, um, AC output power, 1800 watts continuous. 2700 watt surge so it'll start up a AC uh, motor load it's wonderful for that but with the thousand watt hour battery in it it's very limited on time that you can run it under full load so you're going to use it for a light load like a refrigerator or freezer um, draw a couple hundred watts of continuously during a power outage or while you're boondocking to run a television or whatnot so um, it has an input to charge it so to extend this while we're on a um, power outage, say you had uh, a couple day power outage from a storm and you wanna run your refrigerator or freezer, you're gonna want to add external batteries to it. These guys are 100 amp hour batteries, so they're 1,000, 1,200 watt hour um, batteries. Um, I have two of them in this setup. I actually have four of them total, but I'm only gonna use two of them for now. Uh, that'll give me about three and a half kilowatts of storage for this setup. And what I wanna show you is how to actually make these external batteries put more power into these um, power stations. And what we're gonna do is talk about this connector real quick. This is an XT60i connector on the input. And what they did is if you connect a standard um, input to like say a car cigarette lighter they have a limit for eight amps on it and if you hook it up to solar 60 volts you can go up to 500 watts on this specific power station um, but how they do that is the center pin right here on the connector if you connect the center pin to the positive side it's going to limit you to eight amps if you connect the center pin to the negative side which is the beveled side of the connector here it's going to give you 15 amps of input power. Now you can go up to 60 volts on the input of this. Um, let's first show you if you just connected it to a standard um, battery without any kind of um, changes to the system. This is like connecting it to a cigarette lighter. It's going to drop out 100 watts out of the battery. And what that'll do is charge it slowly and who knows, you may run out of battery internal to this unit before you deplete your external source. So what we're gonna do is trick it by giving it a lot more capacity on the input with these two batteries. And what I've done here is I've made a series connector so I get 24 volts out of it and I've connected the center pin to the ground here. And if you guys wanna see how to do all this stuff in detail, just leave a comment below, I can do a quick video on how to do all the soldering and stuff. I don't think you all need to see all that, but anyways, to make this video shorter, we're gonna plug this guy in, and then we're gonna connect both batteries back there, and then we'll see what we can get out of it. So, there's both batteries in series connected to it with the 15 amp limit. And it takes a few seconds to recognize the input, and there you go. So instead of getting 100 watts, we're getting 384 watts, which now you can run a refrigerator or freezer continuously during a power outage, and that's pretty good. You can actually do this with up to four of these batteries in series because you'll get 51.2 volts, I think. That doesn't exceed the 60 volts, but it'll limit the input power to 500 watts on this specific unit. And anyway, so um, like I said, if you're interested in full details, and uh, we'll, we can go over them in another video. But um, anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.